The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, You are the salt of the earth, but if salt loses its taste, with what can it be seasoned? It is no longer good for anything but to be thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A city set on a mountain cannot be hidden, nor do they light a lamp and then put it under a bushel basket. It is set on a lampstand where it gives light to all in the house. Just so, your light must shine before others, that they may see your good deeds and glorify your heavenly Father. Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have not come to abolish but to fulfill. Amen, I say to you, until heaven and earth pass away, not the smallest letter or the smallest part of a letter will pass from the law until all things have taken place. Therefore, whoever breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do so will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever obeys and teaches these commandments will be called greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Let us begin with the prayer to St. Peregrine. You'll find it in your, in your programs. O great St. Peregrine, you have been called the wonder worker because of the numerous miracles which you have obtained from God, for those who have had recourse to you. For so many years you bore in your own flesh the debilitating disease of cancer. I seek God's healing. Help me to imitate your enduring faith in the face of my great challenge, that I may trust the Lord as you did in your time of affliction. Help me to find the strength to proclaim God's presence in my life, despite the anguish and fear this disease causes in me and my loved ones. In this way, by your powerful intercession, I will sing to God now and for all eternity a song of gratitude for his great goodness and mercy. Amen. So first, I would like to welcome you on behalf of the St. Jude Shrine, uh, who is sponsoring this novena. And along with that, there are petition slips for the novena, and they are by the St. Jude Shrine. Also, there will be a reception on the Friday of the novena, which is the day before the end of it, on Saturday morning, uh, just so that there can be an opportunity for some fraternity. After all, we endure things as a body and not as individuals. Come, Holy Spirit, for the hearts of thy faithful and enkindle them the fire of thy love. Send forth thy spirit and they shall be created. And thou shalt renew the face of the earth. Let us pray. O God, who sent the Holy Spirit to enlighten the hearts of the faithful, grant that we, by the sending of the same Holy Spirit, may be ever truly wise and ever rejoice in his consolation. This we ask through Christ our Lord. St. Justin. St. Peregrine. The Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The message of this novena is a difficult message. It's hard to preach, and it's hard to hear. And the reason for this is not simply the weakness that we all experience in our flesh as human persons, but also because we live in a time that comfort tends to be one of the highest goods in our life. But the wisdom of the Christian faith, the wisdom of the faith that we hold is that there is a value, a depth, a power to suffering when you are the one who is suffering, when it is your family who is suffering, even though we may know that it is correct. 
every day. And we recount the sign of the cross in all of our prayers before we enter a church, as we pass them by, as we cross cemeteries, reminding ourselves of that sacred moment, that moment of redemption that was won through the passion of Christ. That is, that which he suffered for us. And as true disciples of the Lord, we must come into conformity with him. He is the master, and we are his servants. And in the road to redemption and sanctification, which is the goal for each of us, we must look to identification with Christ in all ways, in every way, in the most glorious ways and in the most sorrowful ways. For it is through the enduring of the cross that we are able to truly come to experience the resurrection. We are a body. And when we suffer, when we suffer in the very body that we have, that is a gift from God, we can forget that we are not just encapsulated in this flesh, but rather the spirit that we have been given by God extends beyond that and touches the lives of the people around us. And by the gift of baptism, even more so that great gift of baptism that we have been given, that incorporates us into that mystical body of Christ, so that each of us, as cells, as it were, of the mystical body, may be fed and nourished by the grace of the Holy Spirit, animating the mystical body of Christ. And each of us in our turn, as we seek to be more perfectly incorporated into that body, that grace is poured out upon us more perfectly, more readily. And so just like Christ himself, the suffering that we endure, the trials that we have in our life, the grace that is won in those trials, in those difficulties, in those temptations, in our frailty, if born faithfully, transfers that grace through us and from us to those in need, those in greater need than even us. A dear friend of mine, years before I was a Dominican, she beat cancer twice but in different ways. The first time she beat cancer, she beat it with medicine, doctors. And four years and 11 months later, her cancer returned. And six months later, she died. But in those six months, she defeated cancer in a way that was most profound and more lasting than the first time. In those six months, that mother and wife and friend began to enter into a process of identifying with the suffering Christ most perfectly. And she suffered well. And she suffered for us. And she witnessed to the power of Christ of how he can take something so terrible and use it for salvation, for his good. Only God can do this, to take that which is terrible, and transform it into something 
beautiful. I'm not one to cry at funerals. In fact, my grandmother, she used to say, don't expect my grandson to cry at your funeral. He won't. But I cried at Maggie's funeral. Not for her. I cried for me. Because I lost that example. That friend who taught me more about what it was to be a Christian in those six months of her life than I learned in almost any other place in my life. Each of us, in our suffering, in our trials, in our toil, in this mortal veil, we have the opportunity to be conformed to Christ in that way, to become saintly in our own right, but only through enduring the cross as he did. And instead of relying on our own strength, our own powers, our own genius, rather, laying down our entire heart, our will, our mind, our body, our strength, our power, our pride, everything at the foot of the cross. And just as you see St. Dominic clinging to the base of it, gazing up at our crucified Lord and allowing his sacred blood to pour down upon us. And as we do so, uniting our will to his. And when we are afraid, we unite our fear to the Lord's passion, our uncertainty, our suffering, our loneliness, because he suffered each of these just as we do. And we unite ours with his And therefore, it can indeed and in truth become a point of redemption. Not just for me, not just for you, but for those who most need that moment of grace, that drop of redemptive suffering, so that they might be saved and enter into the glory and rest of God. And in so doing, in this conformity, suffering in this life, enduring joyfully, we may enter eternity as beacons, beacons of light and grace to the whole world, salt with taste, divine grace flowing in and through every aspect of our lives. We need only to grasp at it, pray after it, seek it, and then we will be united together as one body, mystically by the Holy Spirit, to live eternally before the face of God. Let us now pray the prayer uh, to St. Jude, page number 14. St. Jude, Jude, glorious glorious apostle, apostle, faithful servant and friend of Jesus, the name of the traitor has caused you to be forgotten by many, but the church honors and invokes you universally as the patron of difficult and desperate cases. Pray for me, who am in need of God's mercy. Make use, I implore you, of that particular privilege accorded to you to bring visible and speedy help where help was almost despaired of. Come to my assistance in this great need, that I may receive the consolation and help of heaven in all my necessities, tribulations, and sufferings, particularly I promise you, O blessed Jude, to be ever mindful of this great favor. I will honor you as my special and powerful patron and encourage devotion to you. St. Jude, pray for us and for all who honor and invoke thy aid. Amen.